I thank you for uh, tuning in. This is the 17th of June of 2021, and the title of this study is Be Clear Where Your Soul Will Spend Eternity. Before I go further, I'm going to pray. Father, please touch my speech, my mouth, my understanding, my eyes. Uh, Father, and your word, most importantly, that it goes out and touches every hearer's heart. Put everyone within the sound of my voice in a bubble of protection with your Holy Spirit fire around us. Please keep it quiet outside and cool and quiet inside. And and keep the recording recording. And when it uploads, upload it quickly without any hiccups. In Jesus' name. Now let's look at this first. Let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 to 13. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar because he has not um, the record that God, he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. This is a very, very uh, serious message that's going to go forth. The Holy Spirit was, was working on me about it. Okay, people read scriptures like that and they think that there's nothing else to do. They think there's nothing left to do research on. Me, I want to know everything there is about him and I want to know him intimately, which means having his Holy Spirit live in me for one thing. And for knowing how he walked the earth, how he taught, how he spoke to people and demons, how he cast demons out, who I am in him. Who my enemy is, which by the way is Satan and his demons, they are enemies. And the people that uh, he's using usually don't even know that they're being used. So keep that in mind when you start getting angry with people. Okay, so, so they stop right there and they believe now I'm safe. So they believe with just confessing him, just saying, oh, I believe in him. There's nothing else to do and that's it. I'm, I'm it forever. I'm it, I'm it, I'm it. I don't have nothing else to do. Wow, I don't want to be like that. So unfortunately, they don't desire any more of Jesus, which makes me sad. Okay? So I say this attitude is sad because scriptures tells us that demons believe and they tremble. Let's look up, let's look James 2 and then 19. James 2 and 19. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Woo! That don't perk you up. I don't know what will. When people don't research and study at least the sayings of Jesus, they missed out on living a victorious and bold and dynamic and a Holy Spirit filled life well we all have a mission on this earth we've all been given a mission every one of us believers have been given a commission that means to go out and tell others about the uh, the gospel in fact about jesus so let's look at the scripture that tells us to do study second timothy 2 and then verse 15 second timothy thank you holy spirit 2 and verse 15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, in John chapter 3, verses 5, verses 3, 5, and 7, I mean, said that you must be born again. Remember, if, if Scripture says three times something, Stop what you're doing and go research it because you know Holy Spirit is trying to get a message to you. Okay? So you must be born again. He will not let you enter his kingdom without it. 
See? So let's read that. John chapter 3, verse 3, 5, and 7. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And then drop down to 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. See now? Like I said, it's very important. The Holy Spirit's trying to relay a very important message. Okay, and it's no laughing matter, and I really pray that you take this message seriously. So I pray everyone will have the desire to know more of Jesus. Scripture tells us that Jesus wants believers to do what he did and to do more. Now, it's not because, obviously, that we are better than him or stronger than him, whatnot, or know more than him. It's because there's more of us, and he expects more out of us. But read John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, verse 12. If ye I shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yeah, John chapter 14, verse oh, 12, I'm sorry. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. I'm sorry, I read uh, 15 and not uh, 12. So it's John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, um, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, after seeing scripture like John chapter 3, I want to know what this means and how I can be sure that his Holy Spirit lives in me. Okay? Then I go searching. That's me. I'm, I, I, I want to know. I'm very inquisitive. And I'm getting, becoming more of a bold, loud mouth. Especially when it comes to the word of God that churches should be preaching, but they're not. And I put up a post about that too. Go look at that one on my Facebook. So then I go searching and I, uh, and I find that uh, if you ask, seek, and search, he'll answer for you. Like Jeremiah. Like, like the scriptures I'm bringing out. There's, I'm using one right now of each scripture, I believe. But there's many scriptures to say the same thing. Now, Jeremiah 20, 29 verse 13, we're going to read here in a second. But... Remember, if you remember Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, the original text says to continue to ask, continue to seek, continue to knock. And he's saying research, that's what it's talking about. Continue, just like we're supposed to continue to pray until we get an answer, right? We believe it's already done, but we, all, we, continued, we continue. And we're also supposed to remind God of his word. And that's in uh, Isaiah uh, so Isaiah 5, 119, no, it's 49 and 50. Isaiah, um, there it is, 119, 49 and 50, I was right. Isaiah 119 and verse 49 and 50. God tells us in many different places in the word to remind him of his word. Also, he loves it when you read back his, his word to him. Hallelujah. And I try doing that every day, reading out loud. But let's look at Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Jeremiah 29, after Isaiah, verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Yeah, remember that. It's a heart issue. Hallelujah. So believe me. Uh, really, when I, you know, I want, it's like the Berean churches. Let's put it this way. 
I want to be like the Berean church. And he spoke about in Revelation, and it spoke about in uh, Acts. Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 11, where they searched diligently the scriptures to find out if what they were hearing was truth. That's why God loved them so much. Okay, that's who I want to be like. So we're going to look at Acts 17, verse 10 and 11. Acts 17, verse 10 and 11. Acts 17, 10 and 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, uh, who coming hither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. And that's how we need to be in the word daily. We need to speak speaking in tongues and daily. Daily, daily, daily. In the word daily, daily, speaking in tongues. Daily, daily, daily. Believing what the word says and reading it out loud. Hallelujah. So at the risk of this video getting longer, the uh, Holy Spirit wishes me to tell you how you can know beyond any shadow of a doubt that your salvation and eternal life with your Creator and Savior Christ is for sure. Okay? And obviously, you want to know that. I wanted to know. I searched diligently to make sure. However, before I tell you this truth, I want you to know that Father Abba does not give you a gift. For instance, he does not give you salvation and then rip it away from you like, ha, ha, ha. See what you had. See what I have. See what you know. He doesn't give you salvation and rip it away from you. You know, but. He will not tolerate sin. And there is only two ways that you can lose your salvation. One is by walking away and, and denying Christ. And the other one is by blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Now, let me make it clear what blasphemy is. Blasphemy is making something good evil. In other words, it's making Holy Spirit evil. And that we know that's uh, that's evil in itself, thinking like that. But that's what blasphemy is, making something that's good into evil. And uh, and he tells you, or Jesus tells you in Matthew chapter 12, you will not be forgiven a, a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in this life or the next to come. So you're going to be real careful. And by the way, if you have a if you worry about that's the that's demonic doing that's demons that are putting this in your mind. If you're worrying that you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, because a true child of God has the Holy Spirit living inside of them or love Jesus will not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Once again, blaspheme the Holy Spirit is making it into an evil, into evil. Let's look at that. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 32, let's look at what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 12, verse 32 Whatsoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So it's a very, very uh, serious subject. So now that's out of the way. Um, I can tell you how to make sure Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Okay, so when you start praising God, you start praising God, His Holy Spirit will get excited, okay, and start speaking in an unlearned language. It's just awesome. So the more that you let Holy Spirit speak through you, even if it talks like garble or baby talk, let Him speak because that, His language will get more defined, it'll get more bold, right? And it'll get stronger also, and it edifies, He'll edify your inner man you know and you need to be edified by holy spirit in order to live a victorious bold holy spirit filled life hallelujah and do the things that jesus wants you to do cast out demons heal the sick the word says i and uh, mark said well in other places too but in mark says you, you know you will 
lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you have Holy Spirit in you, you'll know what uh, demons it is and you'll call them out by name. So you have to rely on Holy Spirit and you have to come whole, uh, holy, wholeheartedly humble and repentant in front of Holy Spirit. You ask him these things and he'll tell you. He's your best friend. He wants to know all about you. Just like your best friend. I was asking, in fact, Holy Spirit for maybe two weeks. I was saying, how can you be my best friend? I can't feel you. Well, that was a lie because I could feel him. I had to correct myself on that even when I was talking to him, saying it out loud. And I said, I don't know where you are, you know, so how? So all of a sudden, Holy Spirit came in, boom, like a flood. Just like in Acts chapter 2, when all the, the people, 120 of them I think it was, were sitting up in the upper room waiting for to be endued with power and the Holy Spirit. So this is what Jesus told them to do, and that's what they were doing, waiting. And they, the, the scripture said that Holy Spirit came in, a mighty rushing wind came in and sat on each one of them, each one of the people, as if a, to as if a tongue of fire or clove of fire was sitting on their uh, head and they began, each person began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. So however the Spirit wanted them to talk, they, they did it. They let Holy Spirit speak through them. So that's what I'm saying. Um, he'll come. So when he came in, so he came into the car just like that. And I just started crying. I was crying for, oh, God knows how long I was crying for, a while. And I understood, a light, it was a light bulb moment, praise God. I like those light bulb moments. But I understood Holy Spirit is like a best friend in the natural because you can answer for them. You can order for them. You know what they're thinking. You know what kind of clothes they like. You know um, what kind of foods they like. See? And you want to be with them all the time. And this is Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is the very nature of God. He wants to be with us all the time. He loves his creation. That's why he wants to dwell in you. He wants to have that that um, physical and intimacy, that intimacy which is like a man knowing his wife. You know, they have intercourse. It's an intimacy between a husband and wife. And that's another thing, that's why we're called the bride of Christ because he knows us intimately. He lives inside of us. So um, this is what he wants. And this is, this is what Holy Spirit told me, that this is how I know that he's my best friend. Just ask him about it if you don't believe me. Hallelujah. 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 Whew. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, the more that you speak in tongues, the more it'll edify, it'll edify your spirit. The more bolder you'll become. The more defined the Holy Spirit language will become. The more you'll be able to witness to other people. The more that uh, the more that you'll be able to see somebody and know exactly what's wrong with them, and you'll be able to pray from like the Word says. I just mentioned it to you. We'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And then we'll get to where we can raise the dead. This is the works, the, the greater works, in fact, that Christ was talking about. And Jesus talked about when he walked the earth. So the, this is called the gift of tongues. The Holy Spirit, like I said, is the very nature of God. So know that the demons hate with a capital H, capital A, capital Key, T, capital E, capital S. They absolutely hate this gift because they cannot understand it. It's a communication between you and your creator. See, because if they can understand it, they could put roadblocks in your way or bring people in your life that will distract you or, or lose, make you lose your faith. Oh, no, 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 no. Speak in tongues often, daily. Okay? So they want to keep everyone, and I'm talking believers and unbelievers, in ignorance. They don't want us to know the gifts of God. They don't want us to have the gift of tongues. They don't want us to speak in the gift, the, the gift of Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So there's plenty of scriptures which shows that people were filled with this Holy Spirit and spoke with different languages. And then we're going to look at this. We're going to look at Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, I love Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak 
with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You go praising Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. Thank you for waking me up a day. Thank you for letting me see your beautiful creation. Thank you for letting me sit at your feet and study your word, which, by the way, we are sitting at the feet of God when we're in his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, if you retain anything from my sermon today, I pray that you understand that after you accept Christ Jesus as your Savior, you can ask him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Okay? And this, like I said, this is the second step. Um, so we serve an awesome creator and a God that wants all of us he don't want pieces of us. He wants all of us. And in return, he gives us 100% of himself. See? Like John chapter 3, verse 30. Let's look at that. John 3, 30. He must increase and I must decrease. See what I'm saying? Once we get out of the way, totally and willingly, rather willingly and totally surrender to him, he can increase then we decrease, and then we want more of him, and he gives us more of him. That's his desire to give us more of him, and for us to live eternally with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, Holy Spirit, thank you. Such everyone within the sound of my voice, Holy Spirit. In other words, baptism is the second step. The, sorry, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the second step. That's why I started to allude to a few minutes ago. Baptism is a second. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is second step. Okay? So first off, you believe him, and then you get baptized, or you could get the gift of the be baptized with the Holy Spirit before you get baptized in water. So there's not a set in stone. But what I'm saying is the second step is to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. That way you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life with your creator and it's your that is your like paul said your down payment on your inheritance so it's awesome the very is a very very serious subject i'm talking about so now for conscious sake be water baptized which i'm talking about like jesus did be fully submerged into water and this is saying that uh publicly Telling everybody around you that can see you that you accept Christ as your Savior. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to add one more thing in here. When you asked for the second step I was telling you about baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, remember when Jesus came to John to be baptized, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He baptized in, in uh, Holy Spirit and fire. It could have been fire and Holy Spirit, but it's the Holy Spirit and fire. So, this is what I'm talking about. Jesus, that's why this is a second step and it's very important to ask for the baptism of his Holy Spirit. Okay? And with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that way you know beyond a shadow of doubt you're saved and no demon in hell, no one on earth can say, oh, you're lying. He's lying to you. You just don't. You're, we go soul sleep or we just thought there was nothing else to us. We just die. So you'll know about a shadow of doubt that you're saved and you have eternal life with your Creator and with your Savior. Hallelujah. I want to know that. That's why I went researching years ago. Okay? So remember, Jesus is our in sample as well as our ink sample. Let's look at that. When he got baptized, it was in John chapter 3, verse 15. John, sorry. Huh. Doing it again. Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. Matthew 3, verse 15. See, this is so important that, that the demons are still trying to attack this message. I pray that you take it seriously. So, Matthew 3, 15. And Jesus answered him, said, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And I'm going to add one other thing in here. Remember Jesus on the cross. Before he gave up the ghost. He says finish and give up the ghost. The, the, the uh, man that was being executed. He was not executed. But he was being crucified next to Jesus on the right side. 
He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. Well, at that time, obviously, nobody had ascended up into heaven yet, except very select. So the thing is, the people that believed, like the Old Testament saints that died believing there was a Savior coming and was looking for him, when they died, they went down to Abraham's bosom. He had, in the middle of the earth, you got paradise, and then you got, uh, there's, a, there's a lava flow, great gulf lava flow between them and hell. And if you remember the story of Lazarus and the, ba the, the beggar and the rich man, the rich man died and went to hell, beggar Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. So this is what I'm talking about. People would die believing there was a Savior coming before Christ was crucified. They went down. Now, Jesus gave up the ghost. But the, the thing before he gave up the ghost, he told the man on the right side, today you'll be with me in paradise. The man repented and God, and, and he, asked, he asked Jesus to remember him. So he went into paradise after Jesus did. Because if you remember, the centurions came and broke the legs of the two that were on either side of Jesus. But Jesus was already dead. That's why they didn't break his legs, which fulfills what I, I think was Isaiah said, no, bro, no bone shall be broken. So the thing is, he went down to paradise to preach to the souls that were down there waiting for a savior. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. That's where the three days and three nights came from before he came up out of his tomb, before Mary seen him and said, Rabbi, and started to reach for him when she, when she started to grab hold of him, hug him for joy, I know. Uh, he said, touch me not, I have not ascended to my father and your father, but go and tell the disciples, my God and your God. And then uh, she went and told them, and then told them to wait for to be endued on power. So anyhow, he laughed after that, rather. But what I'm saying is the man that asked for forgiveness didn't have time to be baptized. So anybody that tells you if you don't, if you're not baptized, you're going to go to hell, walk away from them and ignore them because they don't know what they're talking about. There's several scriptures in here that people had not had the chance and even in earth. For instance, my husband's father did not have the, this is just two examples. I gave you a biblical one. I'm going to give you a one nowadays. A couple years ago, his dad accepted Christ on his deathbed because they knew a, a street preacher, and he came in and talked to him. He accepted Christ on his deathbed, then he died. He, he, gave up the, he gave up his body. You know, his body deceased, and he went up. The fact is, he didn't have time to baptize, but I guarantee every, uh, we know, everyone knows that he did go to heaven. His countenance changed. Everywhere that he hung out, the, the people in the places that, the places that he had hung out, often too often to name the places there went dead they went dead they all the lights went dead but there was a shooting star that went was going up it wasn't coming down it was going up so we know that there are people that accept on their deathbed christ as their savior and they were not uh, able to be baptized like the thief on the cross he asked for forgiveness and asked jesus to remember him he was saved he went into paradise after jesus did because jesus gave up the ghost before he actually, the man on the cross actually died. Praise God, I know this. Hallelujah. And if you don't believe me, go to the Word. It's in there. All right. So, in conclusion, we see that John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus wants us to do more works than he did. However, we know that this is not possible unless you have Holy Spirit indwelling in you. Okay, so do you remember the uh, seven sons of Sivika in the Bible? Let's look at that first. Okay, Acts 19, verse 13 to 16. Acts uh, 19. Okay, verse 13 to 16. Acts 19, verse 13 to 16. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches, that there, 
And there were seven sons of Sivika, a Jew, and a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answering and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on him, them, I mean, and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. It says, it goes on to say that everyone knew about that, that that had happened after that happened, and they got even more so scared because you have to have Holy Spirit living in you in order to live a victorious life and to be bold, like I said, and to edify your spirit and to cast out demons and to heal the sick. I'll say that first. Now let's look at John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. You see, you see how important this message is? And you can also tell by the interruptions out there, and the demons don't want me to tell you this. So please take Holy Spirit's message seriously. Ask him for truth and for revelation and guarantee he'll give it to you. See, and it even tells us that he will. One scripture that does say this, upon many, remember, I'm just taking one for right now, usually. We'll go to Psalms 91, verse 15. Psalms 91, verse 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. See? God's not a liar. Even so, you know, there's so many scriptures I could have pulled out. But I'm going to say a prayer here and then end this. And I really do appreciate you staying with me and learning this with me. Father Yahweh, please open the spiritual eyes of the spiritually blind before it's too late. Let these people know that you want all of them and that you wish that all will choose eternal life with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.